Hello everyone. Hey, I'm back out here in the shop again today, uh, working on the 64 GTO I've been messing with. Um, since we're on electrical in the afternoon class, I figured it would be a good little uh, little video to show you guys what a scenario and situation I have going on with this. Um, first, let me take you and show you what we got going on. Brake lights are stuck on. All right. The brake lights are stuck on. Let me give you a little back history on this. The car originally came in with the customer complaint that the brake lights did not work at all. Um, so they, they didn't work at all when I brought the car in. I verified the customer concern. Um, I did some testing a while back and I verified that the brake light switch was defective. So what the brake, brake light switch is, I'm gonna show you here in a second. It's a simple little two wire switch um, that basically interrupts current flow when the plunger is released. All right. So as the brake pedal is up, the brake light switch is mounted right above the brake pedal and the pedal is up, pushing the plunger in. It separates the contacts and the switch. So the brake lights are off. As soon as you push the brake pedal, the brake pedal moves. It releases contact from the plunger. It co closes the contacts inside the switch and completes the circuit and the brake lights come on. So let me take you under here and show you where it's at exactly. And then we'll get it out and show you a couple things. All right. So it's gonna be kind of hard to see under here, but the brake light switch is that little guy right there. And as you can see, maybe you can see, there's a little plunger. And right now, when the brakes are off, not applied, the plunger is pushed in, opening the circuit. All right, so current cannot flow through it. When I push the brake pedal down, it comes off of the plunger. The plunger springs open and closes the contacts internally, causes the brake lights to come on. This situation, no matter what I do, I push it on or off, on or off, the brake lights stay on. All right, and you can see there's threads there. There's adjustments for when the brake lights can come on, how much you have to push the pedal for the lights to come on, things like that. We're not too worried about that right now because even when it's all the way off, the lights are sticking on, all right? But most of the time, it's always good to double check your adjustment first. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna set you guys back up out here in the shop. And I'm gonna remove this switch and what I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna show you an easy way to check this. This is a very, very simple brake light switch. Um, some of today's brake light switches on late model cars you're gonna be working on are a little more complicated than this. They work pretty much the same way, but they're a little more complicated as in now they communicate with various modules. They might they communicate with the body control module, which controls with a brake light or tail light control module, whatever that may be for the vehicle you're working on. So this, this is way more basic of a system than what you may see today, but the general idea behind it is still the same. So a quick, easy way to check is, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the key on. The brake lights are stuck on, all right? And I'm gonna disconnect this. I think we have a bad switch. I replaced this switch a while back, the brake lights worked, and now all of a sudden after driving it a few times, the brake lights are stuck on. We have the opposite of the original concern. So I'm thinking we have a bad brake light switch, but I was underneath the dash here, hooking up different wires and wiring different um, components into the new system with the fuel injection and new ignition system. So I want to make sure that I didn't disturb anything and cause a problem or there's not a short underneath here somewhere. Because if that circuit was shorted to power, um, you could have the same problem, all right, if there was a short to power somewhere in the circuit. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and check that out real quick, all right. So I'm going to unplug this real quick. And we're gonna go back. And with it unplugged, we're gonna check if tail lights went off. Tail lights went off. So that tells me that there is not a short on the tail light circuit after the switch. All right. So I know that from the switch, the brake pedal switch, to the rear tail lights, there should be no shorts. All right. Everything should be good. The wiring should be intact quick little test all right now the next thing I'm gonna do is 
the guys under here with me here. I'm gonna take a little jumper wire. All right, just a simple jumper wire and jump across these terminals without touching the contacts to each other. I don't want to create a short. All right. Let's take a look. All I have going on there is here's the brake light switch harness, two wires, here's my jumper harness with terminal probes going into it, jumping across the circuit. Let's go back and check the brake lights. Brake lights are on, okay? So we know that the circuit is good, the wiring is good, the power to the switch is good, the ground is good, everything in the wiring in the car should be good, all right? So that has narrowed it down to a switch problem. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead, set you guys back up here. We are going to take the brake light switch out, um, get it out of there, and take it out, and I'm going to put it on the bench, and in my next video, I'm going to show you how to test that switch. All right, stay tuned for the next part. All right, welcome back, everyone. Hey, this is the second part of the brake light switch video I was doing on the 64 GTO. Um, this is the testing of the component part. I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to test this switch. So check it out. Zoom me down here on my workbench. I've got out my DVOM, which is digital volt ohm meter. All right. Sometimes I'll call it a multimeter, a DMM, a digital multimeter. Um, the reason they call it a multimeter in any form is because it does multiple actions. It's not just a voltmeter or an ohm meter or an ammeter. It has all these combined in here. And this is exactly like the one that you guys would be using in class eventually. All right, it's a very good basic meter. Um, and this is a technician's best friend. So anybody that wants to do this for a living, one of the first tools I recommend you mastering is a multimeter. And one of the first tools I recommend you getting is a multimeter. Eventually, you're going to want a really nice, more expensive one. Um, but to get started, even just a basic um, craftsman or just any kind of a basic multimeter will do while you're learning. Okay? So, first thing I want to do to check this switch is the easiest test we're going to do is check continuity across the switch. So, when I push this plunger, we should see a change in resistance across here in ohms, all right? Right now, when it's open like this, the switch is open, the plunger's out. Um, sorry, when the plunger's out like this, the switch is closed, the contacts inside are closed, all right? Because you push the brake pedal, and that should turn the lights on. It closes the contacts in here, power and current can flow from one terminal through the switch, out the other, and turn the brake lights on, completes the circuit. When the brake pedal comes back, it's going to push the plunger in. And when it pushes that plunger in, it's going to open the contacts in here and make it an incomplete circuit or open up the circuit. So we want to check continuity across here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put my meter on ohms. All right, I'm going to put it on the ohm scale. I have it on auto range just because it's the easiest. I went ahead just for ease, I uh, put on the alligator clips that came with my meter, they're really nice because then I don't have to try and hold them together. And they also have this nice cover of them to keep them from touching while we're doing tests. So, we're going to put them on here just like so and take a reading. All right. Before we do that, I always like to take my meter and clip my leads together when I'm checking resistance. Remember, when I'm checking resistance, I'm on the ohm scale, I always want to touch the leads together and I want to make sure that I have zero ohms or close as possible to zero. Some meters you can um, calibrate that out. All right, this is pretty good. This is showing me that I don't have any resistance in the leads or the meter. 
there was a little bit of resistance maybe in my connections through here, that would add up in here and could cause a problem when you're taking resistance readings. It's not gonna be a huge deal doing this test because we're mainly just checking for continuity, but we still wanna check out all the time and make sure we're reading pretty good. It's reading zeros all the way across there, if you guys can see that, all right? So, if I was taking a resistance reading and I had some, to some tolerance already in there, I would have to add that to my readings. But right now we're just gonna check continuity. So I'm gonna hook one side to the black lead, one side to the positive lead. I'm gonna double check everything here with you guys. Pull this up a little closer. I've got my red lead in for volt, ohms, and hertz, because I'm checking ohms. I wanna check continuity or see how much resistance across there. All right, and I have the black in the common, always goes in the common, okay? Luckily this meter and a lot of newer meters are color coded, but always beware that you have the meters set, the meter lead set in the right spot for the measurement you're taking. And if you can see up here, we're on the ohm scale. What I'm gonna do is on this meter has an option, it has an audible option. If you're just checking for continuity, if there's continuity, it'll beep. So I am going to turn that on, all right? And as you can see, it's beeping. The reason it's beeping is because if the brake pedal was off right now, it closed the contact switch and I've got continuity across there. So the switch is good that way, all right? Which we kind of knew that already because the brake lights are stuck on. What we're gonna be looking for is what happens when I push this. When I push this down a little bit, and as I push this down further, it should start to open up and the noise will go away. doesn't change. So this switch is bad internally. The contacts are not opening. All right. Contacts are not opening. Let's see if we can get it to act up a little bit here. Oh. See? This must have bad contacts inside the switch because every now and then intermittently I can get it to quit. Now it won't do it. Oh, there it goes. See? So when the brake pedal be switched like that and the plunger's all the way in, that beeping should go away. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off because I know it's a little annoying. All right, but you can see we still have continuity across there. It's not opening the switch. It should open the switch when the brake pedal pushes this in to turn the brake lights off. Quick little test, all right? Turn my meter off. All right, and I hope that helped guys checking a simple little switch like this. Um, always understand that the biggest part of knowing how to diagnose a system, whether it's an entire, you know, body control problem in a car or whether something as simple as a two prong, one plunger, old school brake light switch. The key to understanding how to diagnose the actual problem is understanding how it works. All right. So we need to know that this switch right now, as it rests, is a normally closed switch. It's closed. Just sitting here at rest, the contacts, the plunger's out, the contacts are closed. There's continuity from this terminal over to this terminal. All right, and the brake lights would be on. But when we release the brake pedal and it comes up and pushes this plunger, it now pushes the plunger and opens the contacts. So by me knowing how this switch works, by doing a little research in my service manual, I could develop my own little test right there just to check, to check it. You saw how quick that was. It took me a total of a couple minutes to test it. All right, so now we would know. All right, so hope this helps. I'm gonna upload this so you guys can see it. Let me know what you think. All right, have a good one.